All right, what is going on, guys? Um, I've been wanting to do this for a little bit, so I figured I'm, I'm going to try and explain this and do this as best as I can. I'm not, don't believe I'm the best teacher, but we're going to go through with this and see how it goes. Um, if anything I say or mention in this tutorial confuses you whatsoever, just comment down below where you're confused, and I will try to get back to you. Well, not try. I will get back to you and make sure I can try to clear things up if possible. Um... I did a poll on my YouTube channel of um, like my like most satisfying rides to see or watch, and majority voted Intamin. So for this tutorial's sake, I'm gonna do a like a modern Intamin coaster. With that being said, we can go up here under coasters and hit new coaster. Uh, this will be for a tutorial, so we'll do that. Once you've got that done, you can go to coaster properties and come over to style for this one we'll be using the rocket coaster so we can scroll down to rocket coaster we'll do new and you can come over to mode you can do custom and that's usually what I do but just for simplicity uh, just click on heartline and that should be good for that for now I, I wouldn't worry about custom right now trains it, it's all up to you on how many cars you want. I usually typically do between five or six. Does either one of those? Um, for colors, I do have a way I do go about doing colors, and I'll show you that right now. All right, so right here is how I go about doing some of my colors for my coasters. I don't do this for all of them because sometimes I will have a color scheme in mind before I go ahead and do this but for those of you that want to you know like mess around with colors or maybe you're not thinking of a certain color palette uh, I'll leave the link to this website in the description um, but literally you open it and just hit generate and it will give you a list of colors um, that you can go now to use these the sim most simple way I wish I would have known this a long time ago but this what it so if you want to use like a uh, I'll do it. I'll generate again because th for tutorial sake, I want to try to get like a. All right, you know everybody. Okay, we'll do blue. We could do this blue right here. Um, if you click on anything right here, where it this part right above the the gradient, I guess it is the this thing. Click on this and drag, and wherever you let go, it will automatically put that color down. So that easily we have that as our. Um as our tricolor and same you could do the same thing with support you could do the same thing for all of it and once you have a color and you hit okay it will automatically save it in your recents so you won't have to worry about losing it or anything um for supports we could just do we'll just do this dark dark blue that's fine um we don't i, don't, I won't worry about the car right now Alrighty. Once you have all that done, you could. The only thing left to do now is just begin building your coaster. And somewhat of a uh, disclaimer: everything that I'm going to show and explain in this tutorial is how I do my coasters. It's not necessarily always going to be the nest like right way, I guess you could say, or it's not the only way of doing things. There's there's a lot of ways to do things in this in uh, No Limits. So th everything that I'm going to explain is going to show you how you can basically get the outcome of my coaster so if you if you like the way my coasters are uh smoothness and like flowing with the elements and all this is how i'm going to show you in this tutorial and how you can get that uh for all of my coasters i usually start off with uh coming up here to the top right you can click on perspective and i usually always start in right view it's probably my ocd not sure why i, I always start in right view most of the time i'll either start in right or i'll go to top and i'll start from top but we'll go back to right for this and once you have that you come over to track and then add vertex and for the start you can just click sloppily all over the place it doesn't really matter and to straighten this out so you can start your station you would just double click on each node and make them strict and once you do that you're pretty much going to rotate around this endpoint right here. So uh, no matter where you put it. Now a quick 
trick that I wish I would have knew a, a while back that I I use a lot now. Well, I've used it over the last few years. Um, I never build my station straight. I always add a slight angle. So to do that, like we'll use this white line up here as a reference, and I'll make sure I'll even this out on the white line right there. All right, if you click this and you hit page down, it will go down very slightly. And this is how I do a lot of my editing for my coasters when I'm doing certain elements or certain transitions between elements is I'll use the page up and down because page up will go up, page down is down. And I'll get more into that later on because you'll see what I mean. So to start off a lift hill, basically you could just do exactly what you did for the station by flattening, but you, you just pretty much go up in an angle, just immediately up in an angle. So we'll say, for this coaster's sake, we'll do like a uh, hundred something feet. So we can go to statistics, check, oh, there it is, perfect. Tuh, perfect, a hundred feet. All right, so I'll go up a little bit higher than that. All right, so once you have this, you would leave, You okay, you would do the same thing with the uh, nodes on the lift, except for one, and that one is the one that goes between the station that goes up into the lift so this one will stay normal so you could still like adjust this but um so the way to make this a little bit more realistic i would say is bring these nodes closer to that one point that's not strict so now that we have that we have like a pretty solid uh station part and lift to add your station you would go to track and then come down to add type separator come down here and you would click pretty much make a gap and then the inside of the gap would become your station because you would click on the gap come up to section type and then just click station and it will give you the train right there boom 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 all right so then I'll bring this up here a little bit and then same thing with lifts but before we do that let's go ahead and like create a very a simple drop we'll just like uh round it out a little bit um, well, that's fine. So, yeah, we could do that. It's a pretty wide crest, but oh well. We'll, we'll, do, we'll do good. Um, so basically, we will do the same thing here. Type separator and click slightly over the highest point. And then type and lift. And then if you double click on the lift, it gives you all these, like, settings that you might want to mess with depending on how fast you want the lift or the acceleration of how fast it takes you up um once you have this like let's say i am like i got a, a drop right here and it comes down and i want the pull out of it to be like right there okay let's say okay first off i'll show you how to smooth it and then we can smooth it even more so we can come to track and first off from not from the strict point you would want to go up to the first point that is not strict and you can just um, like select a handful of vertexes once you do that you can come over to element and depump and it will smooth the uh, nodes that you've chosen and you could do that and usually what I'll do is I'll come back and insert and I will insert more it might not necessarily do anything but whenever I design my coasters I always go back and add a few more nodes because it makes it it makes my elements turn out slightly more smooth or the it makes it easier for me to go through and change if there's slight changes um makes it, it makes it a little bit more clear to change things um so once you do this you pretty much got the basic start of your coaster and from here you would go back to track and you this is what I do I once I have like a lift or a launch I'll get into launches in a separate tutorial that makes it a little bit more simple once you have this, you would come back to track, and you can click add roll. And usually I'll just add rolls pretty much throughout the entire lift. And rolls are pretty much what choose the banking, or what you use to bank your track. So if you place a roll, it'll make sure it will stay at zero degrees. It'll stay where you need it to. Like right here, you can, you can double click on the nodes, and it'll pull up your stuff to change the banking. But once we have this... I c we can go up here to track or the um, top right menu and click track, and 
W is forward, and if you hold shift, it will speed it up. And so you can see already the, the crest is, is pretty smooth. Like There's some adjusting that you could do, but we got, we got the basics of it. All right, for pulling the pullouts of the drops, you here's how I would go about doing it, or how I go about doing it. You would come up here right beside display where it says none, click that, and then click GeForce Combs. And you will see that it gives you these combs right here. To start off, usually, I'll just like, you know, like click off, make some, add some extra ones, and I will highlight. And usually, when I want to make like a, uh, especially with Intamin coasters, well, they like they're more intent, more on the intense side. So I will try to make the pullout consistent yellow, not necessarily strong yellow, but you can see how it's like it's all kind of equally. And then you can also make uh, the further and closer you push them, you can get like a very smooth comb transition. Um, usually I will try to make sure it's as like even as possible, and then. So we got this right here, but I will take the drop itself because we're we're pretty high off the ground from this point. So if I want to go lower to the ground, I would highlight this part, and we this is where page down would come in. We can start holding page down and start getting closer to the ground. Now it's gonna turn red. That's that's okay. We can go back and adjust this. We'll just pull out a little bit more, and then we can just stretch out the pull out. And it's pretty consistent right now. Okay. Once we have this, since we know this is pr a pretty consistent thing, we can you can either depump it now as is, which isn't a bad idea. But for me, I would go to track, insert, and just insert like one in between each one. So then when we depump it, it won't necessarily like deform it as much so now we can just depump a few times and you can see that it's when we first depumped it it made more of like a, a a very wide v and with adding vertexes it won't change the shape as much it would just smooth the shape out a little bit instead of deforming it so now if we go to track and we go you can see it to be very consistent like you see i see a lot of um i see a lot of no limits videos where the pullouts will feel jagged. They're probably smoothed out, but they're probably not as focused on even combs. So it's like you'll see the pullout coming, they'll come down, and as they're coming out of the drop, it will like be like very jagged in a way where you see the screen bounce a little bit. And I personally, I like to make everything as smooth as possible. So I would like to like make it feel solid, like what we have now um then i would go back to track add rolls and then we can add rolls throughout this entire drop point and um once you add the rolls that is pretty much how you do a lift and drop slash pull out between you know like station to drop All right, for this part is I'm going to use a very, very common element nowadays. Um, we all know about the zero-G stall. And the reason I want to use this as kind of a, a reference, I guess, is one way a lot of us um, No Limits designers, we everybody knows about it. Um, and so I see a lot of zero-G stalls that are more snappy than smooth like they're executed very well but the the um the rolling into it will be a little jagged in a way so i'm going to show you how to like get a very smooth um zero g stall like in and out of it uh as shown right here on the corner of the screen from one of my other coasters you can see how it f it it's still snappy but it's got the smoothness of the snappiness and this can go with any element. This can go with high-speed turns. It can go with certain banking. It can do, go with anything. So the way I would do this is 
I would usually I always keep the combs on for this. So what I'll do is I'll just you know like drag out a little bit and we'll make a little hill. And so what I'll do is I'll end up making the nodes to where you can barely you don't see any combs. If you do it's it's hardly any at all. And that's zero G. So well, I'll do the same thing with this. So this would have to would have to like mess around with the alright. And then there we go. Boom. Alright. And then do this. We can just kind of straighten this one out because we can have it come out of this. Um, and then it's an end to so we'll just kind of make it strong. Or yellow, I should say. Um, now that we have, now that we know for a fact this entire thing is zero G, we can, instead of just depumping it, we wanted to stay, keep this form, but just smoother. So we'll just, I'll add a element in between each node that I've already placed. Then I will select the entire part of it and element depump. And I'll probably I'll do this a couple times. And then usually once I add the first element, I will grab a small portion of the element prior and the beginning of the element I'm trying to go into, and I will depump them together. All right. Once you've done that go back to track and we can start adding rolls so the point that you want it to be upside down so I'll just usually for mine I'll do like a, a couple spacings or a few a distance between them but I'll add a handful of them and with these you would go 180 degrees for each of these alright so now we have this and we have the the node right here that goes up into it. Add a couple more, okay. And let me add one more in between here. All right. So now let's let's let me turn off the G force combs and let's see how it flows into it. So as you see, it's you can see how it wobbles left and then it t flips right into it so it's like you see it come out and then around and then you see how harsh the stop on that is I see this a lot in coaster designs so here's how to make this extremely smooth first off we can open up combs again and you see how the combs come out to the right a little bit basically we would double click on the node and just click one degree until all of them are on one side so I'll go here in one degree and so now we have this and we could probably turn this one back a little bit just make sure all of the um, all of these green combs are on one side so we'll just make sure they're all on the same side and we could probably go a little bit beyond that so it's you can see it getting more and more alright it's still harsh at the top at the entering so here's how you can fix this We'll go to perspective and we'll come over here to the the initial flip. All right. When you have multiple nodes that are 180 degrees for the stall, you would go to the very first node, pull it back just slightly, and then you would want to bank five or ten degrees in the direction that you're flipping. So we'd want to go minus. So it'd be 190. And as you flow into it, it'll be a little bit more smooth. Now, from this point, you could just adjust the nodes a little bit. Like, there we go. I take off this. And as you see, we can come up, and then it flips. And it's a solid, like, it's still very harshly stopping, but it's more smooth of a stop. So we come up, and it's boom, zero G. That's basically how you can flow in, and this also works for exiting the zero-g stall too. So I'll, I'll go ahead and do this extremely quick. So we'll, we'll get some of these down, and then 
it seems like from this point we can already so we'd come here 10 degrees and it's just adjusting at this point and then you would do the same thing for down here if you go to combs you could see it's the combs are going like from one side to another so we want to like try to avoid this as much as possible so we got this and then we can go here and that puts all of them on that side and it's really just an adjusting it's just all about adjusting you can go back to track and as you see we'll fly up into it holds it and comes out of it and you can adjust until it, it's smooth to your liking I, fo I, I focus a lot on detail I like to make things feel as seamless as possible so as you see it like wiggles back and forth like we're trying to avoid doing that so we can make sure all the nodes are on one side that's pretty decent that's also without us smoothing this part out at all so that could be an issue for it too so I'll just highlight over here and we'll go to element and depump and then from the exit we'll depump those as well and you see how snappy it goes into it and out of it boom so that is how you can do a very smooth enter and exiting of a zero g stall as a example this also works for super high bank turns like if you're doing a speed turn like on i305 or something like that this also works for that just getting a smooth transition instead of it being very snappy and i see a lot of designs on youtube where everything is f it's perfect but I just wish some of the elements were executed a little bit better as in smoothness or flowing into them. But that's why I'm making this tutorial because I want – just because I've never really – I've never seen a tutorial mention this at all. So I had to basically learn this on just messing around until I figured it out. So hopefully this is very helpful. And just once we have this done, and or if you want to – test it and see how it goes you can come to the very end of your your uh, coaster go to track add type separator and just add a little one back here like a little gap and make this a break once you have this set as a break you can come over to coaster and freeze it and then you'll get your track also if you're trying to do well what we're trying to do is a modern design so let me go ahead and mention this we can unfreeze it double click on the track come to spine type and then do modern single spine now we can freeze it there we go so then there's our element the zero g stall uh, then we can go file save file leave editor and then play and you can see it, it'll do its thing. So what, once you have this, I usually hit F2, and I'll hit plus until we get kind of close to the top. Because once you get to the top, because we have a break, it will give you, like, a message right here. Um, you can just click X on that, and then you can watch your coaster. So we'll see how it flows into it. And that is basically how you make a very, very flowy and smooth zero-g stall. And this applies to many other elements. So, I mean, the same tactic or the same way of just going 10 degrees one way or the other way can, ver can help tremendously with how smooth your coaster goes through an element. So we got this, and we can watch an off-ride, and then we can continue on to the next part of the tutorial. Okay, this part of the tutorial is going to be somewhat short. Um, it's basically we have one way out, and I'm going to pretty much be making a turnaround part right here. I'm really not sure how I plan on doing this, um, but we're going to work with it. And so what I'm going to do is pretty much figure out how I want to do it. So, what? okay, 
the way I'm imagining is we can have it, let me go to right, picturing it coming up, going into an inversion that will pull itself around. And I'm going to try and do this right now. We can, we can get rid of the brakes because we don't need that anymore. Um, you basically only do that when you're trying to do your test runs. There, is been, there has been times in the past where I've forgotten to take the brake out, and I'll continue doing it. And I'll be measuring my forces out based off of after the brake. If you don't take the brake out before you finish the rest of your coaster, you're, if you're going off of forces like I do with the G-Force combs, your forces are going to be off. And then once you take the brake out of it, it, your forces are going to be crazy. So, like, I, I usually just... Yeah, just don't forget. That's, that's my best advice for that one. Um, so, basically, what I'm picturing is the track's going to come up. We'll go into, like, an inversion. And then we are going to come back. And as you see, I'm being very, very rough with it. It's extremely rough. Like, already I can tell you this is not going to be good. It's not going to flow the way I want because it's way too tall. So now we got to come in here and let me explain. Okay. Once you, like the way I just did that, let me turn off G-Force. I highlighted this. If you want to highlight more, you can hold control and then you can continue to highlight or you can hold control and click on a single node and it will just get rid of those instead of getting rid of all of them. So we can do what we have here, but we want to bring it down because we're going to want some more like up here, like usually I want to keep yellow. If I'm do if I'm doing Intamin designs, I generally go for strictly yellow combs because it <laughs> it's Intamin. So we'll we can do this. We'll just come down and we'll just kind of like go up here. And the way I'm imagining this is it will be kind of a like the turnaround on Orion, but with an inversion going into it rather than just banking and going down. So we can kind of get this shaping a little bit. I would also recommend doing a lot of uh, look into shaping. Like um, like if you look at the difference between a Intamin Giga and a B&M Giga, their drops are vastly different. They all have different shaping. Same thing with loops. You got a B&M. You can look at a... If you looked at a silhouette of a B&M loop, you would know it's a B&M loop. If you looked at a silhouette of a arrow loop, you would know that's an arrow loop. Like, they all have their specific profiling and the way they pretty much do their elements. Um, so how I'm picturing this is I want it to come around off of the right side. So if I go to perspective, what I'm saying is I want it to go up, and then I want the track to come around this way. So the easiest way to do that is find the point where you want it to start doing that. Highlight that. And we'll go to front view. Front view is, we'll do it. Um, if you hold, if, if your track's white and you want to unclick it without, or not unclick it. If you want it to go away, you can hold control and just click on the track. And it will still hold, it will still keep your elements selected and take, turn the track off from being white to blue. We'll go back to front. Once you're here, just click rotate, click, and then just slide your mouse, either left or right. And as you see, it, it, it banks it. So we can do this. Once you have that, we'll just we'll just bring it up here. We'll come back to the very middle. We'll see where it comes out there, and we can go back to perspective. And there we go. We got this. So as you see, these the nodes are a little all over the place. So the way I go about doing these is I would go back to track. And since we already did a test run, it's going to start me at the station. So we'll just go through this really quick. Come up, and then it'll do an inversion. And then, so as you see, the track's all over the place. So what I'll usually do from this point, uh, since we can obviously see that this node is way down, we'll click this, and then just hit page up as many times as, as you feel, and we'll do this for the next one down. And pretty much I'll do this until the elements feel like they flow into each other really well. So it's just most of designing coasters is all about like the editing and going back and, and tweaking and that's the fun of it. So we have it's very as you see it's very jagged. So we'll come back to perspective and since it's 
we don't need to do very since we don't want to basic like really keep it this shape we can highlight all of these parts like the top part that flows into it that's jagged element depump it and then we can go through this again oh that's a lot better so we haven't added our rolls yet so it's really a matter of how the, how it flows through the track and we can add in our parts later so we have it's it's really it's nice now so we can come back to perspective track insert and we can just do what we've been doing put insert a node between each two nodes that we've already had placed and then just select a larger portion of all of it and depump it okay so now like I did earlier with the drop into the zero G stall we can highlight the small portion that flows like the in between parts and that will pretty much give us that depump that come back to rolls and I'm wanting it to be about 180 degrees roughly here so we could just click this and go 180 degrees and it's not going rotating the way I want it to roll so the way I go about this is you can either go click on this the node up here and go one or two degrees the way you want it to go or you can click the let me go back to this and I'll, I'll explain that a little bit um, it's 180 degrees if you want it to go the other way you can click on the node right before the 180 and you can go one degree either way and it will change the direction and once you have that you can go to g-force and look at what side your nodes are on so you can tell if you need to go more or less so we'll do that we got there and the nodes are still going over to the right side and we want to keep them on the left side it doesn't really matter what side they're on and you don't have to really focus this much as I am on like which sides the node or the um, combs are on but I just do because it feels when I'm designing them it, f it flows a little bit better when you when everything is consistent so there we go so as you see we'll come up and then you see the combs are staying on the left side they just start to get a little bit wider that's the lateral for um, lateral forces so you'll see we'll come out of the, the stall and then we'll flow up into this and the way I want it to I want it to catch and have no laterals at all and so what we'll do is we'll click this and about the peak of it we can do 180 or 135 and then we can just hit oh wait that might be oh so okay sometimes when you mess around with nodes you might get a really funky element that ends up turning out really good and there's been a few coasters on my channel that I've made and they've turned out that way and those are fun elements um later on in the tutorial I'll explain how I personally have come up with some really wacky elements and it's a very very simple thing but we'll get into that more on later into the tutor uh, tutorial. So, for right now, I'll leave that node at 87. I mean, I'm not, I don't like how much it's coming out of the inversion, but who knows? You never know until you actually, like, try or mess around. So, what we'll do is we'll click here, and we'll just hit, um, we'll just bank it, and then no laterals. And then, same thing, we'll just no laterals, click no laterals click no lats and let's just see how it flows through on this part so as you see it comes through see I, I don't know how I feel about that so we'll see how this goes we'll just so as you see it still comes out a little bit more and then it turns back in so we'll 10 degrees or so we'll just make sure all of them Usually it's, I just choose a side. I don't really think there's a right or wrong side. Just I'll choose a, a side to keep most of my combs on. And for this, I'll just keep it on left. So we'll do left. And then we will just mess around with the 180 into the first bank that's not inverted. So flip it. So it's still like... 
See, now this is where messing around and tweaking comes in because I wanted to do it on the left side, but the element might flow a lot better if it's on the right side. So we're going to do the right side instead and see how this is. Come down, and we'll just do 10 degrees, and we can just do as much as we can to try to keep it on the consistent. All right. So far, what i just seen, it's nice. Also, I really recommend making saving constantly a habit. I have luckily have had that habit a lot where I just come up and I'll hit save for no reason. Sometimes I'll be saving so often that I'll get this gray box where it's like you've already saved. Uh, you haven't modified a thing since you last saved. I feel like that's a very great habit to get into. You never know when a random occurrence will happen where maybe your power goes out or maybe it crashes or maybe something anything can happen so just to be safe i would try my best to get into the habit of saving so we got this there we go okay as that's exactly in my head as i was planning it before i even started this element so like if you can imagine it and you know how to do it usually nine times out of ten you'll get exactly what you're looking for but i'm making this tour because i want to try to i know a lot of my viewers out there i know that y'all have ideas and you want to like execute your coasters and make them smooth and everything but it's just a matter of how and then you i know that when i started on no limits a while back a lot of the stuff i wanted to know or learn there were no videos on i started using no limits back when there was no limits one like way back when there was three different applications you had the editor the one that you played them on and then you had the scenery one where you add your trees and all. it was all three it's three separate apps or not apps but programs um so then now fast forwarding now we have this and I've already went over how to smoothly go through elements. So we have this, the zero G stall. And now we come up into our second inversion, which is an inversion that will take us back to the station. So, I mean, we can freeze, freeze this. So that way we don't have all the nodes or anything. And we can just flow through it and see how it goes. There we go. Okay, so what I'll do is I will, um, hey, let's look at this, and that is, that turned out exactly the way I was imagining it. Um, now that we have that, we can, we don't need to, but we can do a test run. Um, usually on my chain lifts, I will go between seven and like between five and nine miles an hour so this I'll probably do like we'll do like seven miles an hour and we'll say we'll just come back over here and we can f create our break let's take off the g-force combs make it that uh, and create our gap and click the gap and create a break go back to coaster and freeze now that we have that we can File, save, leave editor, and just hit play. And the way I like to do my coasters is I'll hit E twice. And then, as you've seen in almost all of my uh, YouTube videos, I will always go forward and down so I can get, like, a track view. Because I feel like the – it feels like I get a better feel for the elements. Like, if you're in the seat view, the camera's not exactly – the best for showing how smooth elements are so this is the perfect way the camera is locked onto the track so we got this into the zero g stall and then our element we just made and that's that f flowed together very well um we'll do one more where we can just And then this next part of the tutorial is uh, its probably going to be a skip. I'm going to pretty much – I'll make an ejector hill. And after I make an ejector hill, I'll just go random with the layout. And then I'll go over, um, like, connecting and how to pretty much make a better ending of a coaster. Because I'll go th – I'll mention something that I – had an issue with when I was making coasters. Maybe you y'all have not had the issue, but it in case the issue ever comes about, it's you'll know how to fix it. And hopefully this part so far if you're still watching the tutorial, go ahead and give the video a like if I'm if this has helped at all and comment down below if 
I'm missing anything or if there's any extra things you want to know. And now let's move on to the next part. Alrighty, um, so as you've seen, we've got pretty much a basic, a very basic layout, um, and so far this is, this is pretty much what we have. Oh, I gotta change this back, so we're gonna click, double click the track, and then modern spine. Alright, so without changing anything, I will go through, um, pretty much this end part. Boom, boom, and then into our turnaround. Bow, and then I got an airtime hill. That's ejector, and then some quick twisty turns, another inversion, another ejector hill, another pop, and then a high, sp well, high speed turn, and then pop into the brakes. So we don't have brakes, so we're going to go ahead and come back and add these brakes in. Um, usually I will go to track, add tight separator, and then we'll just click right a little bit after the first strict node because we also do the same thing on the brakes as we do with the station so we just uh make a straight line double click a lot of them or what we want to be the brakes and make them strict and then you would just make the turn as normal without strict without making it strict you would highlight the points that are not strict and just literally just depump them and that will give you a smooth turn into the end of that. So, but when it does that, it will make your lift a little bit crooked. Uh, depending on how you're building, you might not run into this issue. But if you do, uh, go to top, and then we can highlight. Make sure you highlight a strict strict node to strict node, so all in between, and use your arrow keys, and just. Tap it over. Back into place. Boom. It should be straight. Yep. Let me make sure. Oh, we gotta go for a little bit more. So we'll just I don't wanna see. Um that might be it. That that looks like it's about right. Um yeah, and it turns smooth, so then it goes through it. Yep, there we go. All right, so I fixed that little issue. Um, so uh, we're going to go back to perspective, track, and then add type separator. We already have one, so then we'd come back to this point, to the last strict one. The strict nodes will come up brighter than normal, so we got a lighter blue. Those are strict. Um, and then we're going to come over here to this strict node and place another one. And again, a reminder, this is how I do my coasters. This is not necessarily the right way. There, I know a lot of other people do other things. Like there, There's probably another way to make very smooth flowing elements like this. But this is my way of doing it. So, I mean, if, if you're wanting to make coasters as smooth and 
or coasters that are like mine in a way, then this will work. Um, so now that we have our pieces of tracks uh, pretty much with separators on them, click this, and then we'd go to brakes, turn that to brakes, and do the same thing for this. And typically I'll do this, and I will click, and I don't know why, but my go-to is 6 miles an hour. Uh, we'll do magnetic brakes. Um, do that for that, and then we will click this, go over here, or we'll double click it. Um, also do six, but for this one we will add a transport device, and then also do six. And we will use LSM for that. We'll just make it all magnet. Um, and do that. So, once you have this, and the whole coaster is done, we'll go ahead and save. Um, I, I cannot press that enough. S making sure saving repeatedly is a habit. Okay. So, now that we have this, it's time for, like, the smaller details, and then we can do a test run of it. So, what I mean by that is click the very f last, or the end of the coaster brakes, like the first brakes on the circuit, and then click on style settings, and this is all preference on what side or if at all. I mean, if you're going for realism, um, I would click all of these, and then the same piece of, just a basic piece of track here, do the same thing. Go here, and we would click check all these boxes. Um, you don't have to do transparent catwalks. I just, it's preference, and I prefer the transparent ones. Um, so then we'll do this for that. Boom. And I'm pretty sure it's seen in other, most of my other designs as well. I will click the lift, and for lifts, I only do one side. Typically, it's the left side. So now, once we have that, we will get this when we freeze it. I didn't do catwalks colors, I don't think. Yeah, I didn't. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just unfreeze it and very quickly do this. Um, no, wrong one. We'll do that, and then we'll just make it the same as... Most of the time, the way I, I do it, um, my catwalk and handrail colors are typically the same color as my support. It's not necessarily like the right, right or wrong way. It's all preference. Um, yeah, that'll do. All right, so then what I'll do is I'll save, and then we will see how this coaster looks. And just to make it quicker, I'll just hit F2, and then we'll speed it up to 4. And then now that we're at the top, we'll just go back to 1, and let's see how this turned out. Because I myself have not seen this go through yet. All right. Um, that turned out pretty okay. That was not terrible. That was not bad. So I mean, you you get the gist of it. I mean, some areas can be uh, tweaked a little bit. Like right here, um, I would probably lessen the banking on this, which I'm going to. But uh, like little things like this, like if the twist in track is too like instant, I will like. S Soften it up by simply just going down five ten degrees of what it already is banked. So like we'll click this, and I'll just do like five. I'll I'll do more than that. We'll d we'll go down to thirty five, and that should make it a little bit easier. So then I'll go back to this, and then we'll just turn this one down. And we'll go that to eighty. So then it should be a little bit like you can already tell just by the the look of it. So if I go to coaster freeze. And you can already tell that the uh, it's a, it's already a little bit easier going into it than what it was. Um, this part can definitely be done without. Like this inversion part is not necessarily needed. And a part of me kind of just I don't know if I like it. 
It's one of those things where you, you think it would turn out good, and it just maybe it's not exactly what you plan. Because, like, it just, yeah, I'm not a big fan of it. So what I'll do is I'll, just, I'll take it out. We'll just zero it out. And literally, that, that kind of just fixed it all for me. I just go to combs and see. And there's a little bit of lateral, but it should be fine. See, that's way too bad. Okay, we can't do that, so... We'll just... We can just adjust this a lot and see. Alright, and then... I'll just pull this back a little bit. There we go. Alright, so... It literally, it's just... It's all a matter of tweaking, so we'll... There we go. Perfect. Um... So basically this is this is the full coaster circuit and so let me get to the point that I was making earlier about um if like things the this one thing that may or may not happen. So okay, if you're about to finish your coaster, let's say you're about to finish your coaster and you're at the end, um typically it's you would just highlight both of them and then just hit connect. And then you got yourself uh, a circuit. Um, but there is times where I have... I don't know if you guys you guys have done it, but I personally have. To where I'll build the lift... Or I'll build forward and backwards at the same time. So I'll build from the brakes back. Because, you know, like there's times where I'll have an element in mind. Or a finale in my mind. And I want to do the finale, and then I can base how much of the coaster, or how how many elements and how long the coaster should be before it hits the finale, because then I have an idea of speed and how it's going to go into the finale. So it, I, it's, it's to make sure, because you know sometimes you'll design a coaster and you're like, oh, I want this to be at the end, but then there's not quite enough room for it. So if, if there's something I really want at the end, or if I want to design and go meet at the middle on both sides, like design backwards to the middle and then design forward to the middle. I mean, it, that works too. Okay, but anyway, let me get to my point. Um, if you're connecting your points, and let's say it's here, we'll say we'll say like you built backwards. All right, first off, this is already bad. So let's go ahead and uh, turn, like fix this up right here. All right. So we have this, and we'll say that you built, let, let's say that you built backwards because you wanted your brakes to be right here, and you wanted it to go into the another set of brakes, like another block section, and you ended up meeting right here because the way you wanted the flow into the brakes. Um, if you connect them here, you're going to notice this arrow. This arrow is a pain because you'll see, watch, like, like no matter how hard you try, like w you're, you can even think, oh well, let's just depump it. So we'll do that. Let's let's say you want to depump it to get rid of it. We'll depump it. So notice I didn't change anything. None of the banking. I didn't change any of that. I just simply connected from a point that wasn't strict. So go into it, and it's still choppy. Like it's just. And I'm pretty sure the forces say it too. Like, it's it's just that's just not comfortable. And plus, it just doesn't look natural. So, like, let's say you did run into this problem. Um, the fix is first off, let's let's say you're at this point. Um, the only way that I've been able to find that fixes it, which is honestly very simple, is click this part. Like, click a strict section of track. You can even do the lift if you want. I've never done the lift, actually. So let's do the lift. We'll just do the lift. We'll say split up. And that's two pieces of track right here. This and this. So we have two pieces of track and another two pieces of track. So as long as there's another split up section, it won't do the arrow part for this. So we could do this, and we can hit connect. And it's smooth. So then we can go here, and just to make sure we can smooth it together, we will just smooth it out again, or depump it. And 
yeah, it's gonna make me go through this whole layout again. So while I'm going through this, I'll, like, I'll just um. So basically, to avoid that issue from ever happening, which I don't know if it's happened to you guys at all, but I've had my run-ins with it, and this is my, this is how I've found it's easiest to fix that. If it's ever been an issue, if it hasn't been an issue, then yeah, I'm I'm happy for you. <laughs> all right. So we have. Oh yeah, we're gonna have to go back and add our uh, our um, rolls in here because I can see that the track kind of sways a little bit. Um, but anyway, going backwards, if we go over the section that we just smooth, you see it goes right over. It's glossy smooth. There's no jagged points, no arrow jaggy parts. Um, so then we can go to perspective, and now we can connect this as a full circuit. Just hit connect, and now if I go to track. And just hit A. It will take me to the part. It A pretty much takes you to the connecting point of the full circuit coaster. I don't. I've never personally built a shuttle coaster. I've been. I have plans for them. I have a a few shuttle coaster layouts in mind that I really want to do, and I'm probably going to end up doing within the next month or two. Right now, my main focus is my tutorials. On top of also pushing out my coasters that I've made. Um. But this is how I've gone about fixing it. As you see, it's it's super smooth. Like you don't you can't even tell that it was connected on the lift. But as long as you connect the two split up pieces on a strict segment, you shouldn't have any issues at all. And if you like let's say you don't have room for one, you can literally go to insert and insert one and then just make that strict. And after you make that strict, then you can split up from that point because strict will also align it to make it perfectly straight. So then I'll come back in here. I'll just add my rolls because I've seen the sway in it. And that's gone. So we'll just come back and we'll just do a lift. And we could change the lift to s 7. Like it was. And boom. So it's it's almost like I never touched it. It's almost like I was never explaining that. So that's pretty much how you can fix that issue if you ever run into it. If not, then this part was kind of pointless for you. But it also there's also other ways to do it. But this is... I would think this issue is only really necessary if you have an idea for the end of the coaster in mind instead of the beginning of the coaster. And, again, I've had a few coasters like that, so I'm trying to, like, I want to make sure I touch on every little thing as I can because I, I know that when I was watching tutorials, so you know, you, you see a long tutorial that's, like, 30 minutes long, but you're looking for one specific part. I know how that feels when you just want that one, like, 10 seconds worth of information in a 30-minute video, and you just want to get to it. So I'm timestamping everything. I want to make sure I can, like, touch on everything in case there's that one thing that's left out. So in case that was never an issue, that's cleared up. So now we can move on to the next part. All right. So for this portion of um, the tutorial... I will show you how I go about and do my um, pretty much terraforming terrain and making, uh, you know, like hills, lakes, and then having... I've gotten comments before on how I have these certain details and all. It, it's, it's extremely simple. Uh, so so as, we, as you see, like the, the base is no grass, just a flat texture of grass. So what I do whenever... I always design the coaster out first. I don't really recommend doing supports right away, but it, it you can do either. Or it's, it's it's really doesn't matter as long as the coaster is not frozen while you're terraforming. So this is fine. Um, so to do basically the terrain, you would go to terrain, terrain settings, load setup, and you want to click complex. And it'll give you five different textures. You would just hit OK. And as you see, we get the grass on the ground, which, I mean, you don't really notice it, but every little detail counts when you're trying to do things like this. So we got the grass now. So let's say I want to add like a, a, like a little couple hills or something. First off, you would choose your the amount of points you want influenced. So we'll do like 16. Maybe, wait, 16 is fine. So we'll do modify height. And then if you see, as you see, you'll see like a little circle where you can like click and drag. Um, and as you notice, like when I pull up on this, you can see that it automatically creates this rock texture on the side. And you can just 
mess around with it to get it the way you want it so it doesn't look as jagged or maybe as like as rough but we'll get uh we'll get a like mess around with this a little bit and try to make something happen um we'll we'll go ahead and like add a, a little a little bit of water here so we'll just add this in and then we'll do that and so now I want to go to a larger point and just start pulling larger sections up and just kinda right now it's just we're just clicking and dragging if you have your whole terrain thought out sometimes I have my terrains thought out like if you're doing a uh, terrain coaster um, if you want to do a terrain coaster design your coaster with the terrain in your imagination so if for example one of my coasters I have a I have two different coasters I have a I have a one uh, two wooden coasters that dive off the side of a wall or a cliff I designed the entire coaster with that cliff in mind but never with it there so the whole coaster just looks like it's diving off of nothing and then you just go back and you add in the cliff later um so we'll just adjust this a little bit so the rocks don't look too bad. Okay, we'll just say that. That's fine. Um, but you can, obviously, you can go back and if you're doing your own coasters, which I know you you guys probably are, um, you just m mess around with this. So you basically have the general idea. So from this point, after you're done adding your mountains, after you're done adding your mountains, because if you do this part uh, uh, before you do your mountains, you're not going to get this rock texture. Um, so make sure you have all of your terraforming and all done, uh, and everything that you want. Once you have everything done, you can go to terrain settings, and then you see how each of these say auto paint. Um, it's gonna, having auto paint does not allow you to paint at all. So as you see, current layer is an auto paint. So you can't click and add your own stuff. So what we're going to do is go to terrain settings. To get rid of this, we're just going to double click it, auto paint, and uncheck it. So we got that, and we're just going to do this for all of them. And by doing this, it's giving us the option to paint these textures on our ground for our coaster. And boom. Now we hit OK. It's done. Now you see that the, we can use paint. And this is pretty much your opacity bar right here. You can slide this for how um, how the opacity for your texture would be. So let's say we want to do gravel. Obviously, we don't want to do 64, so we'll do like 8. Um, there we go. Set, you get gravel. And if I just turn the opacity down a little bit, it'll be... You can you see how it's just like faintly showing up. So you can just like kind of sketch it in a way with your mouse. And just like, you know, add it throughout. Um, there are some textures. I pretty, I'm pretty sure um, dirt's one of them. Like it's it's very. Uh, it doesn't look like dirt. It looks like the bark on the side of a tree. So to fix that, we know it's dirt. So we go to terrain settings, and then we can click on dirt. And then this is where it gets to the messing around part. You would click uh, repeats. Each of these, it's how many times the image is repeated. So it's like. Yeah, it's hard. It's best explained is just go through these, click them, and just try it out. So that you can tell that looks repeated. So then we would go terrain settings and back to dirt, and just click throughout until we see one. See that that's getting better. It's not terrible. That's actually pretty good. So um, that might be the one we go with. So this one, let's see how this looks. Yeah, that one looks like obviously repeated. So for dirt, it would um, our best option would be C. So then with that, we can uh, mess around with this uh, opacity bar basically, and add our dirt in. And I'm only doing this in one section. I'm not gonna like do all of it. And this is just like for tutorial pur uh, purposes. You know, it's got some stuff in there. We can go to um, rocks. Rock might be the same situation. 
Nah, we just gotta turn this down a lot. So we'll just like barely have it on. So add this throughout. You just don't want it to look forced. You want everything to look as natural as possible. Um, so now that we have this, file save. Make sure it's saved. We can start adding little things in. So like, um, as you see, like you paint over areas, the grass just appears on it. it so now we're going to go to scenery, choose, and we can go to home, no not home, uh, recents. Well, this is my recents. Yours is probably going to look different. We can go to library. Once you're in library, you can scroll down to trees and plants. I highly recommend, okay, um, so we have mountains built around the entire coaster. The mountains that are around the coaster, I usually in my head make that as like a a pr um, an area to stay within. So anything within the mountains, I do 3D trees. Anything outside of the mountains, I'll do 2D trees. So y it's not like having to render a lot. And it's if you don't see it, if it's not like up in your face, you don't need it to be detailed because it's just gonna make it harder for you to render or take longer to render. So we'll just we'll just click one of the 3D trees, hit add object, and we'll just like you know like click throughout and just. Place it in random areas. Uh, sometimes for my, like if you're designing a forest, it's it's just putting a lot of trees in one area without it looking repetitive or like it's forced to be there. And that part can be tricky because if you're designing a forest or you're trying to design like an area with a lot of trees, if you're the one doing it, a lot of times you'll it'll look like it's forced or sometimes you might just might turn out perfect on the first try. Usually if I'm doing stuff like this, I will choose four to five. Sometimes I can do it with two, but uh, four to five usually like different types of trees. But we'll just do like two trees for this, for a tutorial sick. Um, so now we have this. If we come down, we see we have the texture on the ground, we have the trees, and then we have the coaster. We're st we still have to do the supporting, obviously. Um, other than that, I mean, this would be okay for tutorial sake. So we'll hit file save. And now that's pretty much how you do the terrain and stuff. If um, I'll, I'll show this really quick before we move on to the next segment. If I go to terrain and uh, we'll do like 32 and modify height. If you're building like a terrain coaster, let's say you already have the lift. You would just pull up around as much as you can like just kind of going around one general area and then you're kind of just like sketching the entire thing up but I, I already have uh, auto paint on and enabled so it's not going to show you the texture like as you see like as I'm pushing up you're not going to get any rock texture like you did over there when we first started doing this um, but as you see we got like a mountain and if you're doing like a drop off you can like come back in and use smaller points to like kind of straighten it out more and it's just all about adjusting literally all adjusting so if you're having a coaster like dive off the cliff here so you want it to come like forward here and then turn and just dive down so like you have all this area to dive down to and boom your coaster can go anywhere that's pretty much how you can go about doing terrains you would pretty much build the coaster with the terrain in mind prior at least that's how I've done it. If there's another way to do it, please let me know because that's the only way I know about doing it and that's, that's the way that I feel is best to teach is just, um, yeah, basically just you build your coaster as if the terrain's already there and then you shape the terrain to your coaster. And yeah, that's basically it. So that is how you do the terrain and scenery portion, at least for my coasters. Maybe it'd be your way of doing it as well. Alrighty, so for this proportion of the tutorial, um, by no means is what I'm about to explain am I an expert at. But I feel like I generally know enough to where it, I can explain what I do know. So, supporting. Um, I know there is, I've seen a couple comments actually, where they mention how supporting is really what can make or break a coaster. Everything can be great. The 
scenery, the layout, the way the coaster, everything about it. But if the supports are lazy, it takes away from the experience. Um, so this is my knowledge of doing supporting and custom supporting. Uh, towards the end of the supporting portion of this, I will show one of my other designs that I've done and posted. If you've seen my video, Devil Dash, the modern Intamin Strata, um, I'll show you the way I did that one and how I went about it. Because that, that was all custom support, so I'll show that towards the end of this. But for now, let's start with the very simple stuff. So, as you know, you can click on the support tab, uh, click choose prefab, and you have lists of supports for each manufacturer and their type of rides. But obviously, a lot of times you have elements that these, su these supports don't really work the best for. So, for this tutorial's sake, um, we'll just use single track. We'll just use the single beams. So what I'll do is I'll place one here, one here, and one here. So then we will try to get them perfectly spaced. All right, so now if I, just to show what we have so far, even though I haven't done much, I'll freeze it. Um, so obviously, offhand, you can see that these support beams are way too small. So what to do from there is double click and pipe size and we'll do like 30 we'll, we'll see how 30 is so we can go through and do 30 30 and 30 so boom and now we can freeze again we'll, we'll go down one but that should be good um, just to make sure we'll do 30 down to 24 and freeze um, alright that works alright cool so we can go back and we'll change this to 24 and this to 24. Now the reason why I'm choosing this is first is because this will pretty much give you a... This is as basic as they can get when it comes to explaining something like supporting. Because supporting can become very complex. It can become extremely complex. Um, so the basic way of showing it is I'll do a support like this. And so we'll click this and we will go to supports and atomize we're gonna click this this already gives us the freedom to move the sub uh, the footer without moving the point on the track itself so with that it also gives us the beam nodes that we can use and with this I will go ahead and click this I'll click each of them and, and atomize all of them all three so basic basically we'll do um once you have this, all of them are atomized. We will click Add Beam, and we will simply click from the node that it allows us to click on, this one, and we will drag to the next footer over down. So we'll click, drag, and let go. And as you see, it, it places the little red beam. We'll do the same thing here. We'll click, drag, and place. If I freeze it, the, the, the size of it might be a little bit off. But that's, that, that's fine. That's fine. So, I mean, it looks good and everything, but it, we're going for detail as well. So what I'll do is we'll unfreeze. We'll go back to supports and flange. We will... This is pretty... The this What I'm about to add is the the point in where two of the beams meet, and it's bolted. So it's pretty much the bolted pieces. So I'll click one in the middle here. We'll click one here, one in the middle here, one in the middle there, and then pretty much in the middle. No, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the right way or the wrong way. It's just you place them where you feel they're needed. So now we have that. So now you see we have the points where the bolts meet. So it makes it look a little bit more natural. From the top, I could, from my eye, I will say that instead of it being one in the middle, we should do two separates, just on more on each side. So we'll grab this and slide it up a little bit. Grab this one and slide it up. And then we will go to supports, and we will just... Add one down there and one down here, so it just doesn't. F it feels more realistic. All right. So as you see, we got the two points held together here and here. So this is about as basic as I can imagine going to supports and explaining them is. So, like, let's say you want to make like an A beam in a way right here. Um, like let's say this isn't enough, like you want uh, support on either side. So what we'll do is we'll go to top, and you're able to see the footers through the coaster. 
So we can unfreeze it, go to supports, and click on add footer, and you just click it really, honestly it doesn't really matter, you can click random, and because we can always go back and adjust it. So we'll go here, I'll just like slide this out a little bit, slide that out a little bit. Alright, so then it's, it's really all on adjusting, however you want it to, it's, it's all adjusting. So go back to perspective, and we will do add beam, and same thing as we did the first time. We'll just click from the top point, drag down, and boom! You basically just made your first custom support. Um, this is it's pretty much like this for all of custom supports, except if you're doing something like I will show later on in the tutorial. Um, my modern Intamin Strata coaster, I did everything from the ground up on the top hat portion that is all custom supports um i'll show you how to do that so anyway we have everything we went back and added our flanges and everything uh, so yeah we can just go to freeze and it's there you go so we have this now and it's, it's nothing crazy actually now that i notice it we don't have catwalks on our brakes um I forgot about that having an issue. So we can do that and we can freeze that now. All right. Um Now that we have this, it makes a little bit more sense. All right. So we have our custom support here. I mean, it's nothing crazy. We just it's it this is as basic as I can get when it comes to stuff like this. Um So yeah. Other than that, I mean, if if you just want to be quick and done you can always you can literally always just click prefabs and just any of these you can click like boom here and then boom boom here and then we can go down to some single beams boom place that in the tr middle of the transition and then go back and just add a few and then we can add one a beam We can we can always just freeze it from this point. Like and there's nothing wrong with like there's necessarily nothing wrong with using prefabs, but you just don't get the same effect. And anybody who makes no limits coasters or they have an eye for it, they can tell if you're using prefabs or customly made like this. So it's it's all preference. I mean if you just want it to be about getting a concept out and you're not focused on supports, then there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, as long as you got supports, it's better than you literally having a coaster like this and calling it done. So, I mean, it's acceptable. It doesn't, it, it's all good. Um, but this is like the basics of doing that. I'll show very quickly. We'll go to front and we'll come over. Okay. Let's say... Um, all right, we'll just say that you're trying to build from the side, but you've already placed your scenery. I know this is very separate. I'm going to go ahead and timestamp this part is separate from the other parts. If you're building and you're like, damn, I already have all my trees in place. Like, I can't see what I'm doing or anything. You can always go up here to display and uncheck scenery. And that should clear that part up. So it goes to this. You can use display to turn off basically everything. Um, so if I scroll in here, you can see the custom support right there. So we have that. Um, we have scenery turned off, so we can see everything that we're doing. We don't have to worry about anything being in the way. Um, so with that being done, I can come over here to supports. And actually what I'll do is I'll, I'll come back over, way over this way for some reason. All right. Um, su supports. And then, oh, your coaster has to be unfrozen. Like, your your coaster cannot be frozen if you're going to do supports. I mean, that's obvious, but if you're, like, trying to mess around and, and like, see how you can make something work, um, yeah, it has to be unfrozen. So, what I'll do is I'll come here. I'll click. We'll do this. We'll just do three footers. Um, make them center of the white line there. And then... I'll put this one in the center of that one, and this one in the center of this one. And then 
Boom. So we have a perfect triangle here. Um, if I go to right... Alright, so we have this now. Um, perfectly spaced. Let's say I'm trying to make a, a strata tower. So for this, it's... If it's your first time doing custom supports, it could be tricky. But if you're doing strata su uh, supports, if you look at a strata coaster, you can see that it's like basically a bunch of triangles built up. And to do this, you would place your footers down like, like you have, like this. I would recommend starting in top view, getting placing them where you want them, and then you can arrange them. And then you can go to your side views, left, right, forward, back. It, it doesn't really matter. And build up from that point. So, once you have that, you can click um, add free node so you can place it freely. And we'll just come up to this point. We'll just go up to the next main point and we'll place them. And then we can see which line this comes up and place that center there too. So now we have center. But now that, that doesn't mean anything really because as you see, they're, they're straight across. So what we'll do is we'll just take this, drag it over top of that. And then we can click that. And then once you highlight this one and you hold control, you can highlight that. Use your arrow keys and just hold it down instead of dragging and having to fight with it. Boom. So now the free nodes are... i got to find out where I just built that. Oops. Um. Yeah, this way. Okay, so I'll just highlight it and it should show me. There it is. All right, cool. We'll come over here to where I started building this. And as you see, you can see the nodes f freely just floating here. So we could just go to add beam, click this, and drag down. And you would do this for each of those. And then, I mean, you can do anything from this point. Because once you have this, you basically have the foundation of what you're trying to do. So now if I have that, we can go back and add some flanges. Boom, boom, we'll just add like one of them, one here, we'll add two on this one, and just like one weird one there, and then we'll just put that. So then if I freeze this, you'll see that it's, I mean, it, okay, it looks like this because it's not still built up, it, it, it's just a basic triangle here, um, but once you keep building up, it will fix, that, that won't be an issue, so... If you're trying to build up, like this is definitely like obviously a way smaller um, ba base for like a strata tower. So what we'll do is we'll click a node, node, and node, and we'll hit copy and then paste. So control C and then control V for paste. And to paste it, one, like you see where the dots are moving, it, it automatically pastes it one dot forward or one space I should say you, you can use your arrow keys and go back to where it's at then we can go back to perspective and like I mentioned earlier with tracks um, the same thing applies with supporting you just hold page up and there you go and that will go up so then you can go back to right view and if we're doing once one every square we can just keep going hold page up until we get to the next one and boom so now we have that. So we can go to supports, um, add beams, and just rinse and repeat. Click, drag, click, drag, click, drag, click, drag. It, it's the same thing. It's just a repetitive process. But with, with literally just with what I've shown here, you can, you you pretty much get the idea of how it works you just have once you have the base down it's all pretty much on from there um i'll probably do a separate tutorial on how to do uh bnm giga structure lifts like you know how bnm structures or bnm gigas they have the very thick lift spine that goes over and then as the drop pulls out the support for it goes straight down into the ground um i'll show how to do that in a separate tutorial as long as this one tr does well, like if this tutorial does well, um, I'll definitely do more and more as time goes on. This is my first tutorial, so I'm just kind of winging it and hoping that it, <laughs> I hope that my, uh, I'm not making it very confusing or confusing. 
Um, so once you add the next one, you do the same thing. You just come back and just add your little points on where the bars meet. And you can go back, coaster, and freeze. And you see how the issue's gone now. The uh, bar piece is sticking out, pointy. It, it's gone. It's on this one now, because this one's not complete. But anyway, you you see how this is. So if you like, um, you're like, oh, I need to add uh, a beam. We'll just we'll just do this for time's sake. Boom, boom. I'll just add this there for the hell of it. Um, great flanges. Alright, and if I freeze this, it might look a little bit less simplistic. There you go. It looks a little less simplistic, but you can see where this is going now. So you got kind of the base of, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say necessarily a strata tower, because I mean, you can do this with top, like basic top hats, um, and it'd be fine. But uh, to connect this, to connect this structure to a piece of track, um, you would, let me go ahead and I'm going to be a little difficult really quick. So we'll we'll take the coaster, we'll unfreeze it, and I'll take the whole structure itself, and we'll drag it over. This is not recommended. I, if this causes confusion, I apologize, because um, I'm gonna be trying to explain this. Um, so we'll go here. This is a terrible way to explain it, but um, we'll do this. Um, First off, let me move this out the way, and I will delete this piece and, and this piece. So, we'll just pretend that you have a structure that fits the structure, or uh, have a coaster that fits this structure. And so, I'll do this. Oh, wait. I did not know that would happen. Um, so, come up here. We can rotate a little bit more. I don't even know. I, you do not have to make... I'm, I don't know why I'm making this perfect. All right, screw it. Um... So we have this, right? So if we're trying to make pieces into the track, it um, doesn't really matter what view, but for this one, I'll use top supports. And then you would add rail connector. And then you just click the track where you want the rails to meet the track. So there and then here. From this, you'll see it adds two points. You got this, uh, you got this red piece. And then you have this red piece. Um, there's dots on the bottom of them. Those are where you're going to pretty much connect the dots to. So, you can go to add beam, click, drag, click, and drag. And then, you know, like if you're going for realism, you can just add your flanges. And now I can go to top view and I guess bring this in a little bit more. This is a... Uh, this is just to kind of explain how to do this portion. So now if I freeze, um, you'll see that it's part of the structure. So, I mean, this was uh, just the how to build a basic structure. And then to connect it to the um, coaster, it's just rail connectors and dragging. So, I mean, yeah, that's basically how the supporting goes and as you see if when you turn to uh scenery and stuff off it also turns the grass off so if we want to bring this back we would just go back to display scenery and it brings back all, all of that um but for the sake of the tutorial and the sake of the recording the video for this tutorial we will go to um supports and uh is it an add free node? We'll try to find the middle point of this. So then we'll go to perspective. And hold up. And you can see the little white dot floating up. I 
I gotta turn the uh, scenery off for this one, and then we'll go to right. And we can go up a little bit more. We'll do that. All right, because I mean, I'm gonna record. I'm gonna end up adding this coaster as one of the coasters on my channel. So, I mean, there, there'll be a reason behind why this is here. So we'll just go ahead and do this. Now that we have this, there's no issues. I mean, it kind of makes sense. Um, so now we'll just do this. All right. So now we can freeze it. And we'll just keep that there for, you know, learning purposes for when I'm done with this, this tutorial. Um, so... Basically, now that I've explained this, the uh, how to add to pre-existing prefabs and how to start from the ground up on a custom support, I'm going to go ahead and just add a bunch of prefab supports to this. And that, I think, will basically wrap this whole tutorial up. I think I went over everything as much as I could. Um, other than, you know, like B&M Giga structures and stuff like that. Um, yeah, but other than that, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, add the prefab supports through, I'll do a final render, and then we can ride the coaster that we have walked through and made together, um, yeah, and this is probably, a, this would be a, like a little early sneak peek, uh, tr coaster for whenever I decide to release this one, depending on how my, um, scheduling works for video uploads, so yeah, um, if there's any portion of the supporting that has confused you or you're lost at, please let me know in the comments. I will gladly get to you and try to make things a little bit more clear. And I'm going to go ahead and support this part so we can continue to the next section. Alright, so I have just finished just throwing uh, random prefab supports out. Even me with me doing prefab supports, I still don't like when things look uneven or off. So right now I'm just adjusting, making sure all of them are like kind of decently spaced. For this, uh, for stalls, if you're trying to just do a quick stall and throw one and be done, the 4D coaster support is great for this. Um, I could technically make a near miss. You know what? I'll do this on the tutorial right now. So, if you want to make a near miss on a coaster, like let's say you want to add a beam and make it go across as like a near miss, um, you can add a beam node. So, let's see if we can see it from the front view. So, we have... Yeah, we can. So, this red one right here, this red support, um, we will just click... We'll make it... we got to make it even so we can see where it's at. So, we have a one on that dot, and follow it up and come down and here's the support so we gotta add it right there perfectly on the line so then if we go back to perspective um, you can see the dots here and here so with that we can add beam click drag like we've been doing now we can click one hold control and click the other and drag down and now it's just a matter of getting it perfectly spaced so that way it can be a near miss and it's going to be a near miss instead of a uh, you just lost your head <laughs> so um, now that we have that go back add our flanges and we can freeze it and you can always change the size of the beam so I mean there we go like look you're not going to hit this at all I mean technically you're going right through this part and you're going up and into this part so I mean you're, it's, it's basically a near miss, so that works out. That is how you add supports on the in the middle of a prefab uh, support. And that also works with custom supports, too. So if you're going to make a structure and you want to add something in the middle, you would just add a sub, uh, beam node and then just place it where you want it. And you can always use your right, front, left, and back um, sides and place your nodes to make sure they're even so you don't have a crooked beam. And then you would just click, hold control, and click all the beams. 
and slide them up where you want them to be and that way they're even but here's for this part and now all we have left to do really is just save it enable our scenery and the way I do my coasters I'm pretty sure most of you my viewers have noticed is I have this portion so you could see ignore this out outer um, part this was a uh, just me messing around earlier it has nothing to do with the tutorial it's the same thing as painting the ground like we did right here I just it's just on the outer so anyway um if you go to scenery choose and you go to high speed and you want to do sparse because if you do dense it's just more for your computer to render if you're trying to render so basically I will do this I will ride my coaster go to the top and once it gets to the highest point just click throughout here and then you can just place these throughout so that way your background doesn't look like completely empty like you're missing a bunch of stuff it will feel like it's filled in so now you have that so now it like feels more filled in so now that you now when you go through it you'll end up you'll uh be able to see it like because I, I like to go from a bunch of you so now we have this so now you see like all out there is also like so what I'll do is I'll just come overhead and I'll just we'll just click randomly throughout over here and like got that so now even though it's not a big difference you can still see the trees in the background so it, it adds a little bit of depth or detail so now you have the near miss here and then you'll go through here over but you can also see that it's empty back there so I will add some over here so I gotta see where I added it and then we'll just add some there and then if we go back to track yeah you can see the forest there it doesn't feel empty or anything so we have all that back there filled and then we have our double down a little transition up into the brakes and to get a smooth like the way this is like it doesn't feel snappy it gracefully goes into it it's the same technique that I showed for the zero G stall so it's just a 10 degree difference between the normal node and where you want that to be so if you want the node to be at zero you would do negative 10 or positive 10 like maybe five feet from that so it I don't know why or how it does it but it, it, it makes it a lot smoother and more gentle going into it so I mean as you see this whole area is empty there's nothing in these areas just in certain areas it's that is all it's about like you can literally see how there's a big gap there when you're on the coaster you don't see any of this it's all on what you see while you're riding so it's in a way it's like a quick slap down and done but at the same time it's also it, you're just trying to fill in the background nobody's here to look at your background they're here to watch your coaster and you don't want your coaster to feel like it's I guess naked so I mean it's all on what you see like you don't have to fill in the entire outer perimeter of this just because you want it to be filled in because the more you put down the one longer it will take to render and two just the more tedious the rendering is unless you have a really good computer um other than that yeah that's that is pretty much it I feel like I've probably covered what I needed to cover at least as far as like designing a coaster from beginning to end and explaining very important parts um other than that if you've made it this far please let me know um because that would be much appreciated if i'm able to explain things and it's understandable and you're also enjoying yourself while watching like that that's the most important thing is that like you understand and everything i want this to be as as clear of a tutorial as possible um yeah the only thing really left to do at this point is just ride our coaster that we've made so we'll just click there and play and then ee -E, which will place us here whoa, whoa 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 i've forgotten one key part so i apologize guys um let's go to coaster and unfreeze click this type style left left and transparent now we got it the catwalk was missing. 
There we go. Boom. All right, now we can ride our coaster. So let's see what, however long this tutorial is, let's see what we've done in that time. So. Um, I'll remain silent once we crest the top, but I hope this tutorial has helped you in any way possible. I hope that I was able to maybe clear some things up that maybe you were confused about. If not, I just hope you've enjoyed the tutorial, and now I hope you enjoy on the ride. Enjoy your ride on our coaster. That's it. Um, yeah, that's that's really it. The only thing left to do now, basically, is, is just paint the train. But, I mean, you can do exactly what I showed earlier for coloring the coaster itself. Um, that also works for train designs, too. You can just keep hitting generate because it's going to give you different color palettes each time you hit generate. So, I mean, you can generate your own color for your trains if you want and make it different than the track color. I mean, when you hit generate, it's going to give you a palette that works together either way. But I mean, you can also keep going because you never know. You'll get some wacky colors that actually work, work really well together. Um, after this off view, um, after we did this off view, I think that's pretty much it. I think we've covered everything in this tutorial, guys. I think that's pretty much it. Ejector here. Um, that break on the uh, first break could do a little bit better, but I mean, that's all. Literally, as I keep saying throughout this entire tutorial, doing these coasters is all about the adjusting. So it's just all tweaking. Um, this has honestly been very fun to do, guys. I'm not even going to lie. I would really enjoy doing more tutorials like this. Um, I mean, let me know in the comments below if you've made it this far. Um, would you be interested in me doing a tutorial on how I do my RMC conversions? Um... If so, I have a couple RMC conversions in mind that I'm going to end up doing. And I can do a tutorial while I'm designing one so you can see my process of it. Because I, it's a process. It's a little bit of a process. But I try to do stick to the footprint of the coaster as much as possible. And so far on all my RMC conversions that I've done on my channel, they have all stuck within the exact footprint um, of every coaster that I've done. But until then, um, I hope this was helpful. Um, I really hope I didn't miss anything. I'm pretty sure I did, though, because this is, uh, this is a many, 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 many years and over 10,000 hours worth of be using No Limits uh, kind of compressed into one video. So, I mean, there's no telling. It could be – there's probably a handful of things I'm missing. If I'm missing anything, just let me know in the comments, just, and I'll gladly make sure I can include it in the next tutorial or just explain it to you in the comments but yeah um i hope this was helpful and yeah i hope you enjoy the rest of your day and i hope i've been able to help you design coasters if this tutorial has helped you and you end up designing another coaster that uh this tutorial has helped design in a way of like um if this tutorial has helped you design any coasters Please let me know. I will gladly check out your coasters on your channel or wherever you decide to post them. Um, I'll gladly check them out and see. I'm always happy to see how I've helped or influenced any of you guys in creating your coasters and all. But until the next tutorial, uh, I will see you guys later.
Well, um, maybe I was wrong in the last one. This is, um, I forgot to add this portion, so we're going to go through this very quickly. Um, this is also my most viewed No Limits video that I have on my channel right now. Um, so, this is my modern Intamin Strata. I'll, I can do another tutorial later on on how to add the modern new gen Intamin trains if that would be like if you're interested in that um but yeah this is the coaster itself as you see the forest built after forest um yeah so if i were to take the scenery out there's the layout and but the main focus of why i'm showing this is right here this entire tower is all custom support and as you see same concept you just building triangle after triangle and just i really studied king Daka and top throw dragsters strata towers because i mean that's the only reference we really have i mean you got a uh, red force but same difference i mean you got the just this type of design um, if I unfreeze this, actually, you could see how it's done. I can go into a perspective. Uh, you see that here's the side view of it. So we got a bunch of connectors to the track along with like going up the tower. And then if you w look at the towers from the side, strata towers, they don't just go in. They have one section that goes slightly in. And then another section that just meets it at the top. So if I go to front, you can see how this tower was kind of put together. With the nodes and everything, you can kind of see how it's put together based off of what I just went over. But yeah, this is the entire coaster itself. I mean, you could tell it's on terrain by where the footers are. Um, yeah, and that's... Pretty much what I wanted to show is like the custom supporting. This is probably the best example. On top of that, it is the most viewed coaster on my channel. So I figured if I were to show any, this is the best one to show. And then, you know, for the part where it spirals down, the arm of it that comes off of the tower. Let me freeze it really quick so it kind of makes more sense. Um, I mean, look at the shadow. It's so satisfying. Um, right here. The arm where you kind of like go through and it comes off and into it. I mean, this is not really acceptable, but for purposes, because you're going to be right here. You're going to be facing this way. You're not going to really have time to see that. But I mean, for like this, th this same arm support, I'm not sure what you want to call that. Um, this is also on King of Con Top of Dragster, where it's kind of, it's got that one arm that comes out and kind of holds the track there. Uh this was mainly because I have this piece coming out. I could have this one coming up and over, but realistically, it just doesn't fit well like that. Like it just, it's just, it just doesn't make sense why this beam is coming up and then out. Um, so we have that, but you you kind of like it's kind of one of those things to where you're going through it so fast, you're not really focusing on that. But now that I've pointed this out, if you've made it this far in the video. I guarantee if you go back and watch my Modern Strata video, uh, it's called Devil Dash. Um, guarantee you won't miss this now. You can pause it even with motion blur and probably see that. And yeah, there you go. But this is, uh, yeah, this is Devil Dash, my Intamin Strata custom uh, support coaster. I feel like this is the perfect example, so this is why I was going to use this. And it also makes it like 20 times better than it's my most viewed video. But yeah. kind of interesting to see without scenery because it's just it looks very bland like it doesn't look as exciting um yeah anyway um yeah this is the last part i wanted to show on my tutorial uh just how i went about doing that kind of you can kind of see with where everything is placed and yeah i mean you got every like yeah that's pretty much it so i mean anyway i'm gonna go ahead and let this tutorial come to an end because I mean I feel like I've been over everything that I could have mentioned or 
could have like touched on. If anything's missing, please let me know in the comments, and I'll gladly make sure I can answer them or get back to you as soon as possible. But until that point, um, hope y'all are all having a good day, and I hope that this has helped in any type of way, whether it's small or uh, substantially. I'm hope I hope this has uh, been able to influence or better help you design your coasters. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.